Hello everyone, welcome to Purpose in Parenting. My name is Jessica Israel and this is a podcast for those of us who have found or are finding our purpose in parenting. Just a quick disclaimer, this is real life for real parents. So if you hear a child in the background, you hear some noise, we will not be editing it out. And the purpose is to really relate, uh, to talk about the truth of what we go through and to really just have that conversation amongst ourselves with others who can relate. Uh, So it may not be perfect, uh, but guess what? Life with kids never is. (laughs) Now let's get into our new episode. Today, let's talk about what I like to call the parent tax. You know, it's interesting because you'll hear a lot of people in the political discourse that we have going on now because obviously there's a lot going on and there has been a lot going on for the past few years, but people will make comments about parents and, you know, say things like, why are they getting a tax credit for their children and I'm not because I don't have any kids Or there's really a push almost against having children where it's seen as the smart thing to not have kids or that having a family isn't a priority and to each their own. If children do not fit in someone's life, then by all means do not have them um, because We obviously want kids to grow up in a loving home with parents who want them and with people who want to be parents. Again, this podcast is for those of us who actually like being a parent. (laughs) We've found our purpose in this amazing journey. But like I was saying at the beginning, there is what I like to call the parent tax, where there is a markup on everything related to children that's pretty ridiculous. I know there's always jokes of, well, you know, having kids isn't cheap. Well, of course it's not. Having a family is not cheap. And you know what? That's kind of the problem. When you look at it, you know, it's interesting that at one point, minivans were kind of like the, as they said, the soccer mom car. Uh, People didn't want to drive a minivan. They weren't cool. And you could get them for a pretty good rate considering the price of other vehicles. But now they are so expensive, you know, as if it isn't hard enough for us to feed our families and clothe our families and pay the extra bills that come with having a family and the extra time that it comes with having a family, the time you have to spend, the time that it takes, the little time you really get for yourself, if any at all. We have a parent tax, you know. They sell these sedans that are so small that reality is they only fit one child. It can be a four-seater car, but how can you bring multiple children to the grocery store and have space, especially if you have a car seat and you sit in the back with your child? You can't put another kid in the front. And so, you know, things like A minivan are really important for parents because of the way they make them. They're really made for families in terms of getting your kids in and out of the vehicle pretty easily uh, with the sliding doors and with being able to access the back seats pretty easily where some SUVs, believe it or not, at least in my opinion, they feel as small as some cars, you know, or you have to access the back seat by going through a really skinny area or putting a seat down and folding it down. And it's very frustrating, not only because car prices are so high right now. I mean, for a used vehicle, they're selling them at the price of a brand new car. Um, But for something like a minivan, I mean, they're going well over $30,000 now. And it's like, how can a family afford that? 
not yeah. only there's no way most families are affording that cash. So you're putting a family in a position to have to go into debt, to have to get a loan with interest that they have to pay back an extra bill every month. You make it impossible for a family to be able to save up for a vehicle and get a safe vehicle for their family. And then on top of that, if they do opt for a loan, because for most people, that's the only option. Most of us don't have an extra 30000 or $50,000 lying around that we can just go spend on a car cash. So you're going to get a loan, which sucks. <laughs> and in doing so, that's an extra bill every month. And with an extra bill, that's extra stress. That's something you have to think about where it's like, okay, I have to stay on top of this. Goodness forbid, you know, I lose my job or a pandemic happens. <laughs> Something like that where, you know, now you're struggling to make the payment on that vehicle. And now you risk having your family's method of transportation taken away. And, you know, the reality is public transportation is not available everywhere. It's not always the safest. Uh, and it's definitely not comfortable with children. Children and groceries and other things are just children period in of in of itself it's not comfortable um you know these things are really important for us because how do you take a long trip with your child in a vehicle that's not comfortable heck how can you fit the kids again back to square one on that and so that's part of the parent tax as well where these things that are specifically for families are now being sold at a premium it's frustrating and it's unfair and it seems like families are really being left out to dry. You know, if you want to buy healthy food for your family because you don't want to give your child ramen noodles every night, fruits are expensive. Vegetables are expensive. You know, they're, they're creating a situation where, like I said, there is a tax on being a parent. Where if you're a single person, it may be rough, it may be tough, but you can brave it out. With a child, you can't really do that. You can't compromise on certain things when you have a child. You can't say, well, you know what? I'm just going to give you the uh, chicken nuggets every night. Well, I mean, chicken nuggets are fine if you give that to your kid once in a while. Fine. Who cares? It's, it's honestly not going to kill them. Um, but... You can't give it to them every day. You know, what about fruits? What about vegetables? You know, all these things that you want for your child, they make it so hard. Diapers. Diapers are so expensive right now. You know, if you don't want your child having a diaper rash and being irritated, and so you want to get them a good brand or something that really works well with their skin, you're paying a premium. You know, right now, it is about $60 for two bags of um, Huggy Special Delivery. Two bags. I, you know, it comes in one box if you buy it on Amazon. But that's a lot of money. You're literally making parents pay $30 for one bag of diapers that may have, oh, uh, goodness, I don't even know. Maybe it has 50 in them. Maybe. Maybe. Um, you know, that's a lot of money for parents. The things going on with formula right now, uh, formula is super expensive. You know, how are families able to afford these things? And the reality is most can't. Most are struggling. Most are going into debt for these things. They're not saying, hey, I'm going to Benihana's for dinner every night with their kids. They're just trying to live a very modest life. They're just trying to survive. And there's a tax on that. Um, buying toys for your children that are non-toxic, that are educational. Why is that so expensive? And why is it hard to find? And why is nothing made in America anymore? I mean, let's be honest, guys. The reality is 
we don't do the best with regulations here ourselves, okay? Because we always have something coming out in the news of an E. coli or something being toxic. There's always an issue. But other places, some other places, can be a lot worse where they have zero regulations at all or the things that they do allow are not as great. Obviously, we're not going to put Europe in there because Europe is actually really good with a lot of their regulations for that and, you know, keeping their people safe from a lot of the harsh chemicals and whatnot. But the majority of our things are imported from China. This is not a political argument. This is a real argument. This is someone who is focused on realism and saying, okay, I don't mind buying a toy from China as long as I know that it's not going to be toxic. And how can you guarantee that? when there's different regulations over there, where there's different standards over there for what they're shipping here. And it's frustrating because a lot of times that's the only thing you can find. Um, You can only find the things made with plastic. You can't find solid wood toys that maybe don't have, you know, chemicals and different varnishes on them. And you wonder why. And then when you do find them, they're so expensive and it's just not right. You know, if you look online right now and you start looking at, let's say, Montessori-inspired toys, they come at a premium. And the crazy, ironic, and sad part about it is that the woman who created the Montessori method of teaching, her whole purpose was to teach children who were in poverty, who were to teach the children who didn't have much money, who came from families that were not well off. And so to make this be a premium now, it blows my mind. It's frustrating. It's not right. And, you know, we parents deserve a sounding board. You know, a lot of times we are left to just suck it up. And we do because we just, we want what's best for our children. We do what we can within our means. And it's just a very frustrating uh, position to be in when you have, like what I said, is the parent tax. Um, Like I said, the cars, the toys, the food, the diapers, the formula. If you use formula or if your child is still in diapers, it's a tax on these things. If you get a product, let's say a cleaning product that is supposed to be uh, less toxic, you know, because you obviously don't want your child exposed to certain chemicals. That's a premium. And, you know, what do we do about this, guys? What can we do as parents to try to change this? I know lots of us, we may um, try to do workarounds like using vinegar for cleaning. It's cheap. It's easy. It's non-toxic. But there's certain things that you know, it's just a bit harder. Like I said, with the diapers, fine, you can, you know, do cloth diapering. But with cloth diapering, there's a premium on that too. It costs money to build up your stash, first and foremost. And then the amount of laundry you have and the bills that come along with that. In the long run, it may be cheaper than, um, you know, using disposable diapers. But the reality is that many people don't have lifestyles that can lend themselves to that. And, you know, doing what works for you is always going to be a motto for me because I feel like in order to be a good parent, you have to have a system that works for you and not necessarily what everyone else wants, says, or thinks it should be, but what's going to allow you to be the most successful because that's what's going to impact your child. Whatever's going to set you up for success is what you need to do. But yeah, guys, I'd love to hear your opinions on this. Um, Definitely reach out to me on social media. Let me know what you think about this parent tax. This is definitely something that I think I'm going to talk more about in other episodes as well. Um, Because you know what? We all need a little venting session on it. And we really need to be able to voice our frustrations on this. And, you know, something has to change. Something has to change. Things have to get better for families, for parents. We have to start making things more affordable. 
um, instead of basically penalizing someone for being a parent, which is what it seems like is, is starting to happen a lot where, you know, a person shouldn't have to feel um, defeated because, you know, simple things become hard to get for their child. You know, good, reliable transportation shouldn't be thirty or fifty thousand dollars for a family um, because no one can pay that cash. Well, some can, but they're probably not most of us. <laughs> uh, and you know, who really wants an extra, you know, four hundred dollar a month bill? Most people can't afford that either. So, you know, just thinking about this, like I said, I'd love to hear your opinions, your thoughts. Definitely reach out to me. And let me know what you think. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast today. I really appreciate the support. If you would like to get in touch or stay connected, please visit us on our Twitter or Instagram at Purpose in Parent. Also, if you're interested and would like to send a personal donation, because this is a labor of love, my cash app is Torah Blessed. T-O-R-A-H-B-L-E-S-S-E-D. Thank you again so much for the support, guys, and I really look forward to chatting again next time.